Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about As I Am. I started using As I Am close to when I went natural. I had a couple of them in my stash and then I kind of moved on to other things but I decided like I want to kind of get through my stash. I didn't like the butters and the co-washes, they felt really coated on my hair but I did like the leave-in and the curling jelly. I did like how my hair looked with them so I decided to just go ahead and give them another whirl. So I have the leave-in conditioner and I have the curling jelly. So this is actually I guess the super size curling jelly. I think I got this on naturallycurly.com if you're curious about that. <laughs> so I think I'll show you a quick demo and then just get back to the review with my results and everything. So just take a look at how it went on on my hair and then we'll get back into the details. This is before adding the gel. Now I'm going to add the As I Am Curling Jelly. So it isn't exactly runny, but I guess it is kind of. It doesn't stretch as far as some of the other gels that I use, so I do use more. But it does give me good moisture and definition. So I smooth my hair like this first to help prevent tangles and then I rake <laughs> to distribute. So I do like a smooth rake, smooth rake smooth. I do think like the other gels that I use, um, the Camille Rose and the Kiki Curly Uncle Funky has more slip. But I can still get my hands through my hair. Once I'm done smoothing to my liking, I put my clips in and shake. So the clips just have to keep my hair, keep the part, <laughs> and also kind of prevent frizz. Yeah, so I'm just go shake this way and do shake. And don't worry, just really happy to shake. So I'm just going to let it dry and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> so that was it. I just used the leave-in and the curling jelly with a little bit of oil on my ends. And this is the result. I do like how it looks, I like how it feels, it's really soft and it is, my hair does feel moisturized. It also gives me some elongation, I'm kind of like where did all this length come from. And I do like the definition as well. So the slip was fine, especially the leave-in, the slip on the leave-in is really nice. The slip on the gel was slightly subpar to the other top gels that I use like Camille Rose and Kinky curly, but it was fine. Like I didn't have any issues getting it through my hair. If my hair is a little bit on the flat side, <laughs> so, but that's not really a problem. I'm, it, it'll get bigger as the week goes on. The only downside I think of these two products for me are the ingredients. So that's why I decided not to get them anymore. Not because of how they worked so much, but because of the ingredients. The leave-in is pretty much great. It's just that. As I am uses that um, urea in all of their products, pretty much, and it's a preservative, but it's a formaldehyde releasing preservative, so I'm not really too sold on that. So of course, you know, it's supposed to be just a little bit released and safe to a certain quality and stuff like that. But for me, if I can avoid using those kind of things, I rather just avoid it. And it's pretty much in all their products. At least it's in these two. So that's the main reason why I'm not going to get it anymore. But I have at least one more unopened one of the leave-in. I think this is the last gel, so I probably have another use or two in, in this and then it'll be done. And I have um, the So Much Moisture, whatever that is, moisturizer, and I have the clean pudding still. So once I get through all of that, I guess I'll be done. Let me actually show you the ingredients, if you can see it. 
It's, it's pretty tiny. I'm gonna try. So it has a lot of great ingredients in the leave-in overall besides the preservative. Like beetroot extract which is good. Apple fruit extract, lemon. Sugar cane which is good for moisture. Betaine which I'm not really too sure about because I mean I know of betaine as a surfactant but it's kind of low down. And then it gets into the stuff that I'm not too keen on. Like the diacylidinyl urea. So it has a whole ton of great stuff. I just don't like the preservatives that they choose for their lines. So, you know, I may keep an eye out in case they decide to use different preservatives in the future. This is the texture. It's pretty rich and creamy. So I do like that also. So it goes on. Kind of thick but nice. It's not to the point of like being too thick for me or not to the point of not having enough water for my hair. I can still use it without my hair getting dry at the end and it's still moisturizing and the slip is good. So I have no issues with the slip. The slip is great. And it smells nice. It's like a kind of sweet, I don't want to say like custard or something. But if I had to send it in a direction, it'd probably be like a sweet like custard kind of scent. So with a slight bit of perfume to it. So I really like the leave-in. Minus the urea. The jelly, this is the consistency of it. So I don't know if you can see that. So let's see if I can put it somewhere. <laughs> so it goes on really nice. It is sticky. It has a bit of a fresher scent than the leave-in. So the leave-in smells more custody. This smells almost more pure fragrance, but a really mild, nice fragrance. If you like the kind of slimy gels, it's not all the way there to slimy, but it's pretty close. Let me show you the ingredients on it. So again, it has the betaine, so I'm really going to have to like look up that betaine and maybe add a little note in the description box about the purpose of it. But it seems to be another trend in their product. The ingredients, water, glycerin, hydroxyethyl cellulose, which is like a cheap gelling agent. And then the betaine, which I'm gonna look up. Then aloe vera juice, pectin, and the beetroot, xanthan, and so on. So those are the ingredients that I would like to see at the top. I don't really like to buy gels that are hydroxyl acyl cellulose just because it's a cheaper ingredient. Now this is a cheaper price. It's cheaper than the Camille Rose, but I, it doesn't go as far. So I think in terms of the amount I get per use, it's probably the same price as the Camille Rose in terms of the number of uses per dollar or something and the ingredients are cheaper in the sense that it's a lot of like this synthetic hydroxyethyl cellulose and not so much of the you know pectin. I don't even think Azam is that cheap actually because at least one product from them I couldn't afford which was the deep conditioner. Never tried it just because of the price but it works well. I'm just not a fan of the ingredients. And you can see, I mean, I really like how my hair looks today. So, no complaints about that. I'm gonna be happy this whole week. So that's something worth mentioning. If you are not picky about ingredients, then I would definitely suggest trying this line because I do think it works well. At least these two products work well. Let me know if you use it. I know at least a couple of my subbies mentioned that they use as I am and they love the result. With it having the hydroxyethyl cellulose, it will tend to give you more definition than say Camille Rose because you know it has a, a kind of stronger gelling agent. So if you are looking for more definition, if you're looking for elongation, then definitely give this a try. In terms of shine, I think my shine is pretty normal. And of course, no crunch. Yay for no crunch. Um, I don't get flakes but I didn't get flakes so yay for that and definitely yay for the moisture and stuff like that. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed my review. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.